Good day, Great Tools. Welcome to the third lesson of Vertical Projectile Motion. In this lesson, we're going to revise equations of motion and then apply them to vertical motion, whereas before we have just been looking at horizontal motion. So let's quickly revise the equations of motion. They will be on your formula sheets, but let's just go through it. First of all, you've got VF is equal to VI plus A delta T, where we know that VF is going to be the final velocity, the final velocity, okay, VI is the initial velocity, A is acceleration, and in vertical projectile motion, acceleration is often written as G. Why? Because it stands for the acceleration due to gravity. Okay. And on Earth, we use 9.8. Okay. And I say use because it's close to the actual amount and the amount varies depending where you are on Earth. Acceleration due to gravity. Um, delta T equals the change in time. Okay, so that's what we've got there. Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. We've got Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2A delta X. So the only new variable here is delta X. And delta X is the change in displacement. Okay, we've got two more. We have got the delta X equals Vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared and delta x equals vf plus vi over 2 times delta t. Right, now these equations are on your formula sheet, so there's no reason for you to get these wrong. In a lot of my students' exam papers, they often miswrite the equation, they copy it down incorrectly, and then use it incorrectly, and it's very frustrating because they know what they're doing, they've just made a silly mistake. So please make sure that if you are copying the equation down, or even if you think you know it from memory, make sure that you're writing the correct equation down before you even start your problem. Right, so let's look at an example. A cricketer hits a cricket ball straight up into the air. The cricket ball has an initial velocity of 18 meters per second vertically upwards. And the first question says, what height does the ball reach before it stops to fall back to the ground? Okay, so we've got a cricket ball a cricket technique hits the cricket ball straight up into the air. So it goes straight up into the air and then it comes down. We know it comes down. Okay. And it tells us that the initial velocity of this is 18 meters per second. Now, the most important thing in these type of equations is to decide whether which direction is going to be positive and which is going to be negative. And in this case, I'm going to choose up as positive. I'm going to choose up as positive, which means that this initial velocity is going to be positive. Right. Now, if you've watched any of the other videos where I teach equations of motion, you will know that I like to write down all the variables that we have, okay, and then we assign the numbers that we know, and then we work out which equation we want. Okay, so let's have a look at that. We've got the initial velocity is positive 18. It says, at what height does the ball reach before it stops to fall back down to the ground, which means we want to know what is this height here. So delta x is what we want to find out, okay? We know that the velocity up here is zero. So therefore we can say that the final velocity is zero, okay? That's the final velocity of the upward movement. And we also know that the acceleration is g which is 9.8 okay so the acceleration is 9.8 but which way is the acceleration the acceleration is down towards the earth and since we chose up as positive it means that this has to be a minus 9.8 okay so now let's think about what equations we can use so i'm going to write the equations up here and I'm doing them in a different color just so that we don't get confused. We've got VF equals VI plus A delta T. That does not help because we don't have the change in time. 
we've got vf squared equals vi squared plus 2a delta x. Ah, do we have the final velocity? Yes, we do. Do we have the initial velocity? Yes, we do. Do we have acceleration? Yes, we do. And do we want to find our delta x? Yes, we do. Yay, so we can use that equation. We don't have to go any further. Obviously, you don't have to write all of the equations down as you go through. You will have them on a formula sheet. So let's do this. We've got vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta x. The final velocity is 0 is equal to the initial velocity which is 18 squared plus 2 times minus 9.8 delta x. Okay, so the first thing we do is work out what 18 squared is and that's 324. So we've got 0 is equal to 324 2 times plus times minus and minus 2 times 9.8 is 19.6 delta x. And then we take this across, it becomes minus 324 divided by minus 19.6 is going to be delta x. So we divide it by 19.6 and we end up with 16.53 delta x equals 16.53 meters. Okay, so the maximum height it reaches this maximum height it reaches is 16.53 meters. Now there's a second question that says, how long has the ball been, how long has the ball been in the air for? Okay, that's a very badly worded question. But they want to know how long is the ball in the air? Okay, so do you agree that the amount of time it takes to get up is going to be equal to the amount of time it takes to get down. Why? Because the final velocity here equals the initial velocity on the side. The initial velocity here equals the final velocity here. And the only force acting on it the whole time is the force of gravity, which is equal. Right. So let's write down our equations again, our formula again, of what we've got, the variables. Our initial velocity, again, we're still going to talk about up, is 18. Our final velocity is naught. We have the delta x at the moment is 16.53. And we've got the acceleration still minus 9.8. And we want the change in time. Now, I would try and not use this information unless we have to, because I may have made a mistake working that out, in which case it will compound my errors later. So is an equation where we can work out the time using what we were originally given, the initial velocity, final velocity, and acceleration. And we see that there is an equation. It is that one there that I've already written down. Vf is equal to vi plus a delta t. So let's do it. We've got vf equals vi plus a delta t. The final velocity is naught. Initial velocity is 18 plus minus 9.8 times by delta t. If we take this across, it becomes minus 18 divided by minus 9.8 is equal to delta t. Therefore, the time to go upwards, just the time to go upwards, is going to be 18 divided by 9.8 which is 1.84 seconds, 1.84 seconds. But we've got to understand that what goes up must come down. So if it took 1.84 seconds to go up, it's going to take another 1.84 seconds to come down. Therefore, it's 1.84 times by 2 is the amount of time the ball is in the air. So we times it by 2 and we get 3.84. Six seven seconds. Three point six seven seconds. Okay. And if you're wondering why that is not an eight, it's because the one point eight four was actually rounded off. It was actually one point eight three something. Okay. So there you go. You now have an example. I want you to go through this example again by yourselves. Try and do it without looking at how I've done it and then go through the video and make sure you understand what's happening. Okay, let's carry on. Let's look at another example. John throws a tennis ball straight up into the air. It reaches a height of 60 centimeters. So we've got John and he throws a tennis ball straight up into the air 
and obviously it comes back down. So what's important is that we need to read through this and make sure what information we're given. We're told that the height of this is 60 centimeters, but what is wrong with that unit? That is not an SI unit. The unit, SI unit for distance or displacement is six, I mean, is meters. So therefore we need to divide this by 100. So therefore, if you divide by 100, that becomes 0.6 meters. That there is 0.6. Let's see what the question is. The first question says, determine the initial velocity of the tennis ball. So we want to know what is the initial velocity. But what do we know? Let's list what we know. We know the final velocity at the top of the throw. The final velocity is zero. We want the initial velocity. We know that acceleration due to gravity is downwards, okay, and it is 9.8, and we've got delta x is equal to 0.6. Now, I've left spaces here because we done, haven't done something which is very important. We haven't decided which direction is positive. So I tend to always choose the direction that was used initially as positive. So it says that he John throws his tennis ball straight up into the air. So therefore, I'm going to choose up as positive. And grade 12s, you need to state this somewhere on your page. In the question, you need to write, just draw an arrow with a positive and tell us if you're choosing up as positive or if you're choosing down as positive. Right, okay, and what is the question? It says determine the initial velocity. So we've got all that, we don't have time, we've got this though. So let's look at our equations. We've got Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2a delta x. We've got Vf is equal to Vi plus a delta t. We have got that delta x is equal to vi delta t plus a half a delta t squared. And we finally got delta x is equal to vf plus vi over 2 delta t. Okay, we want an equation that will be able to give us our initial velocity but does not use time. These three equations all use time, so they are out. So we can use this equation here. So we can say Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2a delta x. Okay. The final velocity we know is naught. The initial velocity is what we're trying to find out. Plus 2 times acceleration. Since we chose up as positive, the acceleration is always downwards towards gravity. So that's a negative. 9.8 and since this is displacement is 0.6 and it's going up okay this is just displacement of 0.6 over here 0.6 okay because we chose uppers positive so therefore we can say we've got 2 times 9.8 times 0.6 which is 11.76 so we can say the vi squared is equal to 11.76 and then we square root our answer and we get that vi is 3.43 meters per second okay so the velocity the initial velocity with which john throws tennis ball up into the air is 3.43 meters per second let's look at the next question it says how long does the ball take to reach its maximum height so they want to know how long does it take how long does this bit take okay to reach its maximum height okay so let's think about what we got we've got the initial velocity is equal to 3.43 we have got the final velocity which is zero the acceleration which is minus 9.8 we want the time, but we also have the displacement is 0.6. So let's see if there's any equation that we can work out where we don't use the initial velocity and we can work out time. And no, there isn't. So then it doesn't matter which equation we use. So I would say, let us just use this equation, yeah. 
where we've got Vf equals Vi plus A delta T. So the final velocity is naught. Let's write it down. Vf is equal to Vi plus A delta T. The final velocity is naught. The initial velocity is going to be 3.43. We get 3.43 meters a second, and it's positive because it was going upwards, plus the acceleration of minus 1.8 times the time delta t. Okay, so therefore we can say that minus 3.43 over minus 1.8 equals the change in time. Therefore, the amount of time it takes to meet its maximum height is 3.43. divided by 9.8, which is 0.35 seconds. See how nice it is. See how very easy it is. It's not complicated. You just need to write down the variables and then substitute in appropriately. Let's do a final example. This example is actually very good because it often comes up in the exams or something similar comes up in the exams. It says Peter takes a trip in a hot air balloon. Okay, here's your hot air balloon over here. Okay, the hot air balloon is ascending at a velocity of three meters per second vertically upwards. So it is going upwards at a constant velocity of three meters per second. And then Peter accidentally drops his phone over the side of the balloon's basket at a height of 30 meters. So he is at this point in time. 30 meters above the ground. So obviously the cell phone is also being dropped at a height of 30 meters. Now it says calculate the velocity with which the phone hits the ground. Okay, so we want to know how hard it hits the ground. And this is important. The part that's important is for you to realize that the initial velocity of the phone when it leaves Peter's hands is actually three meters per second upwards. It is part of the balloon and basket and Peter system and therefore he is the, the cell phone is going up at a velocity of three meters per second and then it is going to so it's effectively being thrown up it does it just doesn't see that because we're also traveling at three meters per second so it's going up at three meters per second it reaches zero and then it goes down and hits the ground and obviously this is a very exaggerated parabola the reason we don't see it going up is because we're also going up at three meters per second but the minute the phone leaves our hand what is the only force acting on it the only force acting on it is of course the force of gravity so it's going to start slowing down immediately so basically we pull away from the phone as it drops down so by the time it gets here we're already up here somewhere okay so when it, by the time the phone gets to the top of its curve we're already much higher okay so it says calculate the velocity which the phone hits the ground so as usual i say to you guys we need to write down our variables vf vi a delta x delta t and we need to choose a direction being positive we need to, to choose our frame of reference and i tend to choose the way that we're moving first as being positive so i'm choosing upward as positive okay right so therefore my initial velocity of my phone is going to be three meters per second because it is traveling upwards at an initial velocity of three meters per second the only force acting on the, the cell phone the minute it's dropped from Peter's hands is the force of gravity all the way down, which causes an acceleration of minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Why? Because why the minus? Because it is downwards. Displacement. Now, the final displacement is going to be 30 meters below where it started. So therefore, this motion here is downwards. The displacement is obviously going to be at minus 30 meters. We don't know the time and we want the final velocity. Okay, so as per usual, you would check your formula sheet. I'm going to write down the formula. So we've got Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2a delta x. And if we know our equations, we know all the other three equations use time in them somewhere. They all include time. 
and since we don't have time we're not going to use those so the equation that we're going to use is this so we've got vf squared is equal to vi squared plus 2a delta x the initial velocity is 3 squared plus 2 the acceleration is minus 9.8 and the displacement is minus 30. So if we pop that into a calculator, you have got your 9 plus bracket 2 times 9.8 times 30, which is going to give us VF squared is equal to 597 meters per second. Well, actually, let's just leave meters per second out because it's not finished yet. And that's not the correct unit because it's all squared at the moment. And then we're going to square root the answer. And we're going to get that the final velocity with hit, which it hits the ground. Now, please understand when you square root this, you're going to end up with a positive 24.43 or a negative 24. 0.43 and your calculator is most likely only going to show you the positive 24.43 but that obviously can't be the correct answer why this is incorrect because this is choose we've chose upwards positive so this would show a final velocity the velocity which hits the ground at as upwards as 24.43 which cannot be so the final velocity is minus 24.43 meters per second or we could say that the final velocity is 24.43 meters per second downwards. So remember that we can always, since it's a vector, you always have to give a direction. And that grade 11s is basically your vertical motion um, and use an equation to motion with your vertical motion one dimension. Please practice and then go do the questions on the turnable system.